transactions don't generally happen on social. You drive them back to your website where you can control the message. So if you're spending all those resources getting people to a destination, that destination better be primed to actually convert that traffic or you're kind of wasting all that time and money. Today, I'm very excited to be joined by Wes McDowell. If you don't know who Wes is, he's a website marketing strategist that helps service-based entrepreneurs automate their leads and optimize their sales. His course is called Profitable Website Launchpad. Wes, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Doing great, Mike. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited that you're here, Wes. Today, Wes and I are going to explore how to create landing pages that convert. But before we go there, I would love to hear your backstory. How the heck did you get into marketing strategy? Start wherever you want to start. Yeah. So the story goes back to back my, in my early graphic design days, right? I was a graphic designer doing everything from logos to er, very early websites back then. Um, and it just kind of evolved into, you know, I'm doing graphic design, but I'm seeing where the world is headed, right? It's all going to the web and websites are becoming very important. So then I transitioned into uh, much more web design, right? I'm working with clients. I'm asking them these really kind of rudimentary questions like, you know, what colors do you like? Um, What other websites do you like the look of? And I would just kind of treat it like Burger King, right? Like you can have it your way. I'll just take my cues from you and I'll just give you what you want. The problem with that was... I started seeing the results that were coming from those kinds of websites. They didn't know what they needed, so they didn't know what to ask me for. So obviously the results were not great. So when I started doing, like I I took it to heart, basically. I didn't like providing something where I was just taking money and they were not getting any money in return. So I started studying everything that goes into what makes a website work, right? What are the messaging points? What's the UX, the strategy behind a website that really makes it work and makes it say the right things to the right people and do something for your business? So I took all of that stuff that I learned and I started kind of rebranding myself as not a web designer, but a website strategist. And of course, with that comes all the the marketing stuff, like how do you get people to the website? And then what do you say to people on the website? So that's kind of my journey. It's where I'm coming from with what I do. So so let's go back to, uh, when did you start your design company agency? And then when did you pivot to become a website strategist, if you will? And then tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah. So I started, uh, my business back then was called the deep end. Um, I started that probably around 2010 ish and I was living in Seattle at the time. I was kind of working at nine to five and doing my freelance on the side with this, you know, graphic web design company. And, you know, I was just scrambling for clients. Basically, I was doing a lot of SEO work to try to get them. That's how people were finding me back in those days. It was before I was on YouTube. So it was just people kind of finding me through the search engines. And um, yeah, again, we would have these just really basic discovery sessions, if if you can even call them that, where I would just kind of ask them what they need. And then I would not provide too much insight of my own and just give them what they said they wanted. Um, yeah. So the journey what, again is just, yeah. yeah. What, what year did you actually decide to pivot your strategy into becoming a website strategist? And then how was that in the beginning? And then kind of lead us up to kind of what you're doing now. Yeah. So basically that would have been around 2015. Um, I found a, an online mastermind basically that would work with web designers like myself, showing them that discovery process of how can you actually extract that information from clients so that you can now offer them something that's more than design, right? So it would, I basically learned that whole process and that opened my eyes to the fact that there's all these questions you can ask and there's all of these little bits and pieces that need to go on that website. So yeah, that's 2015 is about when that, that started. Yeah. So 
how did the business progress from 2015 up until now? And tell us about what you're doing now with your course and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I started slowly, but surely my journey on YouTube. Um, and that's really made a big difference in my business. So, um, I started focusing a little less on the search engine side and trying to get, trying to like have people find me that way. And I wanted to focus on content. I wanted to focus on, um, teaching a little bit about what I know on YouTube. The point being then people would find me, they discover me that way and they would take the bits and pieces that I was teaching them. And that would start to inform their strategy. And then a certain percentage of them would say, Hey, I want to actually work with this guy and get him to do my website for me. But then as time went on, I stopped uh, actually doing client work at all. Now it's pretty much all based on my teaching, right? On YouTube, as well as my paid course, um, where I teach people start to finish. How do you create the messaging? How do you turn that raw messaging into the finished copy for the entire website? And then how do you bring it to life? Even for newbies, right? You can, um, there's so many ways of bringing a website, um, you know, even with no technical expertise, you can do it these days. So I teach people the whole, the whole way, start to finish. So, um, through that course. You have helped a lot of people presumably right over the years, uh, with this and you moved away, like you said, from doing a service-based business to teaching what you know, but just share some of the things that you've been able to do. Maybe you can name a client I mean, you don't have to name a client, but you know, you started as a web designer, you learned that there's more to the customer journey, if you will, than just the design, right? You learned that the persuasiveness of the copy and all that stuff is really, really valuable. Have you been successful in such a way that you could share? You don't have to mention the name of the clients, but you know, you must've been fairly successful to ultimately get to the point where you decided you're not going to take clients anymore. Yeah. So basically the stuff that I teach is all designed to really kind of three X to 10 X the amount of clients you can get through your website. And I do mostly, I guess I should say this. I mostly deal with like service business websites for smaller businesses who offer a service of some kind. I don't really do e-commerce, um, but what I teach helps people get, like I say, three to 10 times as many clients. So the way that I kind of transitioned out of client work is really to do with how um, I was able to monetize my course through YouTube um, and as well as just kind of AdSense revenue from YouTube. So basically I was able to replace that client income with income and in, from other streams. Got it. Okay. So, um, let's talk about what we're going to talk about today, which is landing pages that convert, acknowledging the fact that you predominantly help service-based companies. And when you say service-based companies, maybe give examples of who this is for, but, but also caveating that if you're not a service-based company, there's still a model here that you can follow, right? Yeah, absolutely. Most of what I'm, we're going to talk about today can be applied, whether you're selling a product or an app or anything like that. It's This really isn't going to be about like, if you're running a blog or something, this is, won't be super applicable. But if you're selling something, uh, whether it's a product or a service, you can definitely make this work for you. Yeah. And I'm just curious what, from the service side, who are the kinds of uh, customers? Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody from like, uh, you know, other web design agencies, they use my course a lot because they can apply it for their own business, plus all their clients. Uh, things like photographers, um, plumbers, uh, contractors, uh, pretty much any type, like computer repair people, whenever you offer a service, because the thing is, as different as all those services are that I just mentioned, they all solve a problem. They all bring about a result. And as long as you can kind of filter what you do and what you provide through the framework that we're going to talk about, it's going to work for you. So um, there are a lot of marketers listening right now who are very focused on organic engagement or paid acquisition, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, dot, dot, dot. Um, and um, not all of them are focused on the landing page. So why don't you just make the case to anyone who's skeptical 
why um, dialing in your landing page is so absolutely important for marketers. Yeah, well, I mean, it all comes down to you're either paying for traffic with, uh, with actual money in the case of ads, or you're paying for it in the form of your time with organic, you know, you're doing content marketing. You're driving people somewhere, right? These, these like transactions don't generally happen on social. You drive them back to your website where you can control the message. So if you're spending all those resources getting people to a destination, that destination better be primed to actually convert that traffic or you're kind of wasting all that time and money, if that makes sense. Totally. And yeah. I have been long term proponent that, um, this is why I love things like conversion rate optimization. I love things like copywriting. And I love the kind of stuff that we're going to be talking about today, because believe it or not, even if you have a great landing page that converts fairly well, there could be small little things that you could do that you might learn today that can actually improve it. And that way you don't have to do anything. And all of a sudden you grow your sales. So let's talk at a high level. Um, what your strategy is without revealing all the the steps. We're going to go through those in just a minute, but what it, what at a high level is this strategy that we're going to be going through? Yeah. So I call it the perfect landing page blueprint. It's basically a series of sections that when you put them all together, they make a really airtight case for letting people know why you, right? What problem do you solve? And then why are you the person to help them with it? Um, and again, it's super customizable. It's super versatile for just about any service or product to be able to just slot your own content through it. Yeah. And what have been some of the, what have been some of the um, results that some of the, your customers have had by following this? Yeah. I mean, as much as 10 Xing the amount of leads they get from it, basically. Um, so many people make a mess of their landing pages and their website in general just by saying all the wrong things. And they just have way too much stuff that basically means nothing to the people coming and visiting. So when you can talk clearly to people in a way that like they see what's in it for them, everything changes, everything gets better. You get way more um, customers as a result of it. So that's exactly what this is designed to do. Which is the desire of almost every marketer on the planet because now marketing is in the business of selling, right? <laughs> We are direct yeah, sales. Maybe. That's what we do so much as marketers. So let's talk about the first step of your perfect landing page blueprint. What is the first step? Yeah. So the first section is what we call in marketing, the hero section. Um, a lot of you listening or watching probably are familiar with that term. If not, it's just that it's that top section of any modern, uh, homepage. First of all, I should clarify when we say landing page, it can be a specific landing page for an offer can be a homepage for a smaller business. It, it works for either of those scenarios. So the hero section, it's at the very top. It has a really big job to do. This is the section that's make or break for any website, any landing page. It has to let people know within five seconds what you do, why that's important, and what people need to do to get it. So all three of those things have to be communicated inside of five seconds where people will not spend the time or the energy trying to decipher what that is. So um, you've got to really make it clear. Um, and the way I like to handle this, generally speaking, it's made up of actually, actually five parts. We'll go through them quickly. The first one's the headline. That has to be very big, has to promise the result or the transformation that you're going through. So the way I like to think about it, this landing page framework is you're telling that story. You're telling that hero's journey of where they are now. It's not in a good place all the way to where they're going to be in the end. It's a much improved place. So before we get to the beginning of the story, the hero section is what I like to think of as, you know, in a TV show when it, like the beginning will kind of happen right in the middle of the action. That's like a climactic scene. Then it'll say 48 hours earlier. Right. take you back to the beginning. So the hero section is that climax of where we're, we're getting a picture of what that final result's going to be, of the, the happy outcome. Then after that, we start with the problem. We'll get to that in a minute. But so that's the hero. It's, it's the climactic result. Headline promises the result. 
transformation or outcome. The subheadline underneath that needs to give clarity. It needs to say, okay, I've made this big promise. Here's the methodology in which we deliver it. So um, I was just working on something today for a company who they help uh, dental school applicants get accepted the dental school, dental school of their choice. So the headline might be something like achieve your lifelong dream of being a dentist. Okay. Just a big result. If we stopped there, people would be like, well, what, what does that mean? How is it going to do that? Subheadline says through one-on-one -on -one personal coaching, we help you define your resume, but da, 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 da. you know, like it, it tells like people, that. this yeah. is how we do it. Yeah. Then we have the call to action button. Schedule your free consultation, right? It should not be contact us or learn more. It has to be very specific. Then the, the next part, most people skip this part, but I love it. It's three bullet points of basically three positive outcomes. And that would just kind of be right underneath the button. Um, get accepted to your top dental school. Um, learn, learn exactly what, what will make you stand out amongst competitors. And then a third one, I don't know, um, transform your, the tra trajectory of your career for the better. Something like that. Three results. Then the very last thing for the hero section is the image. You have to really connect with people with that image. Most people will make the mistake of using a picture of that's meant to depict like themselves. Think of every lawyer website you've been to. It's always the like the legal team standing there looking very stoic. But really, you want to show more of a photo of kind of that happy customer outcome. So in this case, it might be a um, someone who's actually like a dentist now. And he's like, he's at work and he's smiling. It's like a real moment where he's just enjoying his dental career. Right? I love this. So let me just go over this again. For this first section of this landing page slash homepage, depending on what kind of service you're in or whatever you're selling, uh, we've got the headline, very big. Uh, and that's going to promise some sort of outcome. Then you've got a subhead, which kind of describes a little bit more. Then you've got this call to action, but which I think is really wise because a lot of people bury the call to action down the page. Um, and then you've got these three bullets, uh, which are positive outcomes that will happen if you, um, go through this service, right? I use the phrase mm -hmm. desired outcomes when I'm writing these kinds of things, right? Like. Like, and I even use the word imagine, imagine blank, imagine blank, imagine blank, right? Which is another way to accomplish mm -hmm. it. And then an image. Now I would imagine this image could be placed anywhere in that section. It could even be part of the masthead of the design. Is that, is that, or what yeah. thoughts where that image should be placed? Yeah. Well, a lot of, there's basically two ways of doing it. In my opinion, the first way is what most people do. It's in the background, right? It's, it's full width. It's in the background. The only problem with that is then you have to put kind of a um, a transparent layer over it so the text can be read on it. So what I like to do these days is actually split that hero into two sides. On the left is where you would have your text because that's where people's eyes generally go. And then on the right, you'd have kind of that, that image over there. I like that. Okay, yeah. so step one is to, is to craft the hero section what is the next step in the process? Yeah, so the next section is what we call the problem solution. So um, this is a section that a lot of webs, a lot of businesses skip this, but it's really important because if you don't talk about the problem you solve and how you solve it, people aren't going to understand like why they even need you to begin with. So what you want to do is really clearly, and I like to use that pain agitate solution framework. It's a million years old, but it works. So you basically, you, you just plainly state the problem that you solve. That can be the headline of that section. Then underneath that, you'll talk about the, like give three or like three good examples of what that problem looks like. Okay. Back to our dental school application example. The problem is, um, you know, are you sick of being rejected by every dental school you try to get into? Then underneath it, um, you know, Tell me if this sounds familiar. Hours uh, spent trying to craft the perfect application, um, having to explain to your family that you, you know, didn't get in. Where basically you're you're painting that picture. You're trying to kind of you're kind of poking the bear a little bit, making them see that you get where they're coming from. 
people shy away from this because they think it's, quote, going negative. I don't look at it that way. I think of it as if you don't bring up the things that are already in their mind, because these are already very much in their mind. If you're the one that brings it up, they will assume, okay, this guy gets me. Therefore, he must have the solution to get through it, right? Then underneath that, you bring up your solution, right? Um, through working with hundreds of dental school applicants, we've honed in on the perfect process that's going to help you from start to finish, blah, blah, blah. So that's- Yeah, I love this. And I want to just add a few more thoughts on this. Um, it's yeah, It's true that a lot of people are resistant sometimes to talk about the- um, the, the positive, the, the negative outcome, if you don't solve the problem, right? Uh, in this right. case, um, you could, you could end up, um, unfortunately missing out on the career that you really always aspired to have. Right. And, and when that happens, a series of other things can happen. Right. And, and if you say it in the right way and you're legitimately hitting the right pain points, right. And then yeah. you're going to, you're going to grab the, the prospect and really dial them in because they're going to be like, wow, yeah, they, they absolutely are addressing my concerns and it's actually of service to them because you're going to fulfill that with the solution to their problem. Right. They got to know yeah. it's for them. That's the key. Right. So one of the questions I think a lot of people listening are wondering is how do I even get at these problems? Wes, you know, how do I even know which ones? To talk yeah. About? Well, I mean, it's, it's, you got to know your customers. You got to know, you have to know what problem you're solving. If you don't know that, then you need to take a step back and really get to the bottom of it, either by talking to your clients or just do some really rudimentary research. Just look at, um, you know, if you're offering a service, like go on Yelp, look at some of the the reviews that people are leaving. They'll because they'll usually start with like what their problem was, and they might even use kind of those emotional words of how it felt. Um, Sometimes it's just a matter of like putting yourself in that headspace of just figuring out like, what would this feel like if I didn't do this? But you do have to be careful. I have seen um, a lot of people in the past when they try to use this framework, they will reach, right? They'll take that not getting into dental school and it'll be like, you know, you'll be sleeping out in the streets. It's like, no, let's not go that far with it. These have to be real, like pain, not to say that couldn't happen, but keep yeah. it reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why is because when you go there, people are going to say, that's a leap. This is a scam. I'm out of here. Right. But if you say, exactly. look, um, every, every month or every year that you go without getting into dental school is going to make it is going to mean it's going to take longer for you to fulfill your dream to ultimately be a dentist, right? Something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, yeah. and, and earn the kind of income you really want to earn something along those lines. Right. And that's a legit concern without making it sound really, really bad, right? So now how do we how do we weave the solution into these problems? Yeah, so it's basically just one simple transitional statement, right? You're talking about the problems and then you say something along the lines of, but it doesn't have to be like that, or we've found the solution. It's just it's a really just easy little one sentence thing. And then you just go into how you kind of either came up with your solution or just, just what it is, right? You don't have to get into the whole backstory of it. People won't read a novel about this. They just have to know that you understand their plight, right? Like whether you've been through it yourself before. And if you have, that's really, um, that's really powerful to kind of put yourself in their shoes, that statement of understanding, or just saying like, I've seen it a million times. I know what it feels like but it doesn't have to be like that. Here's why. Now, there are some people that are wondering whether or not in the header, sec the hero section, where we also address um, a little bit of, um, of, the, of the promise. And, um, and, and is there any, we're not really mentioning the problem up in the hero section as much as we are in this section, but we are mentioning right. the outcomes. And I would imagine we can re-echo those outcomes again in this section. Is that fair? Yes. I mean, repetition is actually good on a landing page because people always will skim these things. They don't read a website, they skim them. So to repeat certain key phrases, 
it's psychologically it's powerful because the more people read something or hear something, the more likely they are to believe that it's true. So repetition can work in your benefit there. Never feel, I know it can sometimes feel like awkward to repeat yourself over and over again, but in this case, it actually helps. Well, and the good news is we've got tools today like chat GPT that can help you come up with a variation of it that sounds different than what you said, but it's essentially the same thing. For sure. Now let's talk about the third uh, step in the process. Yeah. So that is going to be the benefit section. Super important to talk about what do you bring to the table? Like why you, what's your, what's unique about what you do? So really important here to understand before we even get get into it, the difference between the benefits and features. It is by far the most, like the biggest mistake that most people make. Even pro-level marketers can make this a lot. So you really want to ask yourself, what are all of the things that you offer? Start there. Those are the features. That's the you know 24-hour phone support. It's the uh, five rounds of revisions if you're a designer. Those are the features. What's the benefit of that, right? What's the benefit of including five rounds of revisions? Well, I would say it's uh, you'll have it. You'll yeah, have a design you love. Exactly. Or we'll, right. we'll work with you until we get it right. Right. Or something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect designs. Right. Um, 24 hour support means, uh, you're, you'll never be, you, you'll, you'll always have help when you need it basically. So start there. And I like to use three. I, I am a big believer in the rule of threes, like in these marketing pages. I just think it, it just reads really nicely. It kind of conveys it well. So I like to see just a three column layout of the the benefit. That's like a one to three cent, like one to three words title. That's the benefit. Then underneath it, do like one short sentence that kind of describes the feature that makes that possible. Then some kind of a graphic above it, whether it's an icon or a photo that kind of visually depicts it. Yeah. So let, let's spend just a second talking about benefits. Um, the best way to think about benefits is going to be in light of everything that, that we've led them up to, right? So we know what their problem is. We've just written that section. We know we can yep. solve that problem. Um, and we, we, we put ourselves in the position of trying to understand where they're coming from. Now, like what are some additional benefits they get as a result of working with, let's just say this is the nursing school again, right? Um, one of the, one of the benefits might be, um, um, uh, placement in the top, um, hospitals, right? Like, and mm -hmm. wouldn't that be, that would be an outcome, right? Like, like, um, our students are generally admitted, uh, first rank into, you know, our graduates of our program, um, are, are often first picks for the largest hospitals in the city or something. Couldn't that be a benefit? Yeah, for sure. That's like the ultimate benefit for that. Yeah. So you just, just have to like, like think about what is it they really want, right? And that's the benefit, hopefully, yeah. that you're fulfilling here, right? Exactly. And the thing about benefits that people get tripped up on too is they think it has to be something that only they offer, right? That's not the case. Because most people won't talk about their benefits in the right way. So if you do, everyone could offer the same thing. All of your competitors could offer the same thing. But if they're not talking about it, but you are, you win that conversation. So super important to always include it. And again, with the benefit as the lead and not the feature. So, yeah. I love that. And, you know, um, if you do start with features, what I found to be really helpful is um, what are the parts of your service or product that people love the most? And then why do they love it? And then keep asking, why is that important? And why is that important? And, and that levels it up a little bit, right? To the point where you're ultimately fulfilling one of those desires, right? That are hopefully higher up in the sales page. And then you can start to connect the dots because it is true. I used to be, I've been a writer for decades. And in the olden days, it was all about features, right? It was all about like, okay, this has a faster CPU. This has more storage. Who cares? <laughs> like nobody right. cares about that. They care about themselves, right? Like this is going to allow you to achieve your dreams, right? Faster. Yeah. Um, dot, dot, dot. So, okay. People are emotional. Uh, 
Yeah. 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 They make decisions based on, based on feelings. So, okay. Exactly. Step, step one is the hero section. Step two is problem solution. Step three is benefits. Step four is what? Testimonials. So you can't, these days you cannot avoid having any kind of social proof on your website. So, and the good news is, well, it's good news, bad news. The good news is you don't really have to come up with these yourself. Bad news is sometimes it can be tricky getting the right testimonial. Like what I mean by that is they're not all created equal, right? Some testimonials don't say much. They just kind of say like, great service, highly recommend. Tom's great. That's not going to move the needle too much, right? So the the challenge with the testimonial section is to curate the right ones. Again, I, I'm a fan of three. If you can get three here that um, all speak to a pain point or the result you got or an objection that people have. So make sure each of your testimonials that's going to be on this page earns their place on that page. You can have a testimonials page elsewhere on your site that just has all of them. That's fine. But here on this landing page, you want three of your most hard hitting testimonials. Keep them short, um, bold, little key words in there if you need to. Um, and it's hard because most people, whenever I see a testimonial section, they like to include the entire testimonial in full. Don't do that because people aren't going to read it. If you ask yourself, if people only read this one sentence, which sentence do you want it to be? And that's probably what you should go with. Well, and it doesn't even have then, to be the entire sentence, by the way. So you can just take a fragment of this and go dot, 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 and add a couple more words from their other parts of their quote. Uh, one of the yeah. questions I think a lot of people are asking is how do they get these testimonials if they don't already have them? Do you have any advice on that? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it it's harder than people think to get a good testimonial. Like there's a lot of advice out there that says, just ask everybody. Fair enough. But what I've found to be the most, like the, the, the best way of getting a testimonial is not just emailing them and asking for one on their time. It's getting in touch with them saying, hey, I could really use a testimonial will really help my business. Giving them that kind of a reason for doing it helps. Then you should schedule a little interview. Don't have that because if you ask them just to write you one and send it to you, guess who's never going to do it, right? <laughs> They're never going to have time for it. Much better to get them on the calendar. I'm going to call you at this time. Just tape the conversation and ask leading questions. Ask them because ideally you kind of want to show like in each of these testimonials, a really short little story, that little short hero's journey. Where were you before I found you? What was your problem? Um, describe the process of working with me. What was the result on the other end? Ask his questions, then kind of like Frankenstein the answers together into a cohesive little snippet of a statement. Then what I like to do is once I've done that, once I've done the writing of that based on their words, I email it to that customer and say, here's what I came up with from our interview. Does this sound, do you approve of this testimonial? Once they say yes, that is their testimonial. You kind of had a hand in creating it, but they've signed off on it and it's it's now their words, if that makes sense. Totally. And a couple other things that I've done um, at my conference, Social Media Marketing World, we've had camera crews where we've asked people very similar kinds of questions. Um, why did you decide to come to the conference? What's your experience been? And what would you say to someone who's never been here before? Right? Those are the essential questions we would ask. And then we would just um, get them transcribed, right? And then we would essentially take the best pieces of them because they've already given us permission to record these things, right? And we will yeah. either use the clips or we'll use the text because oftentimes the text is more powerful than the clips because they're not always, some of them are rambly, right? Like they're going to be talking all over the place and buried in there is a little nugget of gold and you got to dig for it. And while it sounds like a lot of work, this is really, really important. Like why are testimonials so important? Well, I mean, think about the last time you bought anything online or worked with a company without going to Yelp or going to, you know, Angie Amazon. or whatever, and yeah. seeing, yeah, Amazon, like for products. I've never bought a th anything in the past five years where I haven't seen like, okay, it's pretty close to five stars. Here we yeah. go. Perfect. You know, okay. it's, it's so, why like it's, and it's why you don't buy stuff. You know, you go to like a really sketchy website that you've never heard of before you 
you think twice and you probably don't buy from that website, right? So. Yeah, but you might if it actually has a lot of really glowing testimonials that don't seem fake, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. So, okay, what's the next part of the process? Okay, so the next thing we've got here would be um, the features. So we've talked benefits. Now we've already established that people make those decisions based on emotion and you said it, then they back it up with logic. So now we handle that logic piece by just like a list of all the features they get. But we want to go a little further with it. Again, repetition works. So we're going to call this section features and we're going to list out about 10 to 20, whatever number works. 20 might be high, but 10 to 12 features. But then we're going to then go away like, so it'll be feature hyphen, then talk about the benefit for like one short sentence after it. Don't just stop at saying 24 seven tech support, 24 seven tech support. So that dot, 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 right? So just list that out. That way, everybody who wants to buy from you, but they're still like, I, but God, I need that. Like, I need to know exactly what I'm going to get before I feel really confident pushing that button. You're, this is for that. Yeah. An example of this right. is on our sales page, we say um, vacation in San Diego for social media marketing world, right? And then we say something along the lines of bring your family and hit up SeaWorld, Legoland, and world famous San Diego beaches um, and send your family there or sp spend a few extra days in this beautiful city, right? Because we're, yeah, we're, the feature is it happens to be in one of the beautiful cities in America called San Diego, right? And, and, yeah. and you got to just, you can't just assume they understand why that's important, right? So you have to kind of explain it a little bit more. Another thing that we've done, I don't know if you've ever tried this, Wes, is we put a table together where we would say other conferences and then we would say ours and there'd be check boxes, not included, included, yeah. not included, included. And that's kind of valuable as well. It's kind of a way of trying to differentiate yourself in a really easy grid that will allow people to see, oh, recordings of every session, check other conferences, X, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, that, that's something, I don't know if you've experimented with that at all. Have you ever tried anything like that? Oh yeah. And in fact, like inside of my course, that's like when we talk about the homepage, one of the things I talk about is kind of the wild card section, which is some businesses need a little push in one way or the other. And like, it might be different from business to business, but that is definitely one of those kind of wild card sections I talk about, you know, us versus them kind of thing. Yeah. And you don't have to name them. You can just say the other people. Yeah. The uh, other guys. Yeah. Yeah. The other guys. All right. So we've got so far the hero section. We've got the problem solution. We've got benefits, testimonials, and features. There's more. So what's the next section? Yeah. So the next we have avoiding conflict. So this is like, think of that problem solution section. It's a little bit like that, but now you're talking about here's what could happen. You've read all this stuff. Here's what could happen if you don't take action now. But here's what could happen if you do. It's just two really short sentences, painting the picture. It's basically like, you know what lays in store for you now. Do you want it or don't you? Weigh it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, you can say, yeah. You can say if you choose not to, you might continue to struggle finding your way into that um, awesome nursing job. But if you choose yeah. to go this route, um, you'll greatly increase the chances that you can get a job at an institution that you really want to work at right? It's kind yeah. of like a reminder of some of the stuff. It's like, you're, it's like you're taking some of the stuff that you've already done up above, right? When you were talking in the hero section about some of their desired outcomes and, and kind of what's at risk, and then just kind of reminding them near the end before they go away, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's just, it's hitting them again with like, so here's what you know. I leave it up yeah. to you. You can have this path or you can have this path, which, which is it going to be, right? I love that. Okay. There's yet another section after this. So what is the there is. section? Yes. FAQ, FAQs. So basically this is there and it's purposely down at the bottom um, because once they've gotten to this point, either they're, if they've gotten to this point, they're probably fairly interested. We can say that people will have abandoned further up if they weren't. By the time they get here, they're interested, but they've got questions and They've got hesitations and objections too. So don't ever think of FAQs as purely 
what the name implies, right? It is frequently asked questions. It's questions you get all the time um, that will help navigate people to see if it's for them or not. But it's also to like, what are those objections people have? How can you state that objection as a question and put it there and then kind of give your rebuttal against it almost as the answer? So this is like a little um, kind of built-in salesperson almost at the end who's handling objections, answering questions to just get people that much closer to a sale. I love it when you call it objection handling. Uh, I think it's really, really important. For example, back in the day, uh, for social media marketing world, we had recordings of sessions, but they weren't live. And um, the question was, do you offer live streaming of social media marketing world, which we do now? And mm-hmm. instead of saying no, what we what we said is we offer um, everyone who purchases a ticket the ability to watch every training session at their leisure for an entire 18 months. That means if you miss something, it's never going to be a problem. You can come back to it whenever you want. We never said no, but we didn't right. say yes. Do you understand where I'm going with yeah. that? So, so we respond yeah. it by saying there's value in having access to the recordings. Um, and, and that was how we did it. Right. And, and that was just kind of like it, it, there is an art and craft, if you will, to objection handling, isn't there? Yeah, for sure. And we do have to be clear here. It's when I, when we say handling objections, some some objections are valid, right? And you should do you should be ethical in how you handle the objections too. Like what you just described is perfect because there's really like you're just explaining why this is just as good as live, if not a better, right? But right. you don't want to you don't want to handle every objection to the point of like this thing is for everybody. There's no exceptions. Yeah, of course, like whatever you do is going to be for some people and not for others. And in fact, if you can kind of talk about in a real honest way, like, like that's a fair, that's a fair point. And if this is your case, maybe this isn't right for you. That helps exactly. people who aren't right for it. Like they can weed themselves out because they're not a good fit anyway. And it helps the people who are a good fit see like, okay, this person's being honest. They're actually calling this, this other group out for not being right for it. But guess what? I am right for it, as it turns out. So yeah, just be yeah. honest with it and it'll, it'll help. I've seen this FAQ section go a little south sometimes in the following way. Let's say you got a customer service department and they decide that this is going to replace the customer service department. So every question anyone asks, yeah. asks ever is going to be on this page. And all that does is confuse the prospect, right? You want to be real smart about the ones you have here. You don't want to include every conceivable question that someone would ask. You want to probably address the big questions, right? That are stopping someone from ultimately becoming a customer, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen what you're talking about. We're basically, they're answering questions that people are not ready for yet. Um, These are questions that haven't even entered their mind. These are questions that will come up later when you're already working together. Um, Yeah. These should be questions that come up in those like, beginning stages when people are deciding if they want to work with you or not. Yeah. And, um, how many FAQ questions typically talking like five to seven or three or what's your thoughts on how many? Yeah. Well, on an FAQ page, you can have a lot. Um, and it it helps to categorize them, but on this page, I would say anywhere from three to six. Yeah. And I like what you just said there, because what we've done, for example, on uh, our checkout page is typically where we would have these FAQ questions if we're doing a multi-page sales page. But if we have a single sales page, uh, we'll have some of the big ones and then we'll have the ability if they have other questions to go to a special page, right? Which addresses them or to contact email, phone numbers and stuff like that. You typically go there if you want, if you have further questions. Yeah, I mean, it's, it depends on how you want to handle that, right? If you have people ready to stand, standing by by the phone, great. If not, then I like chat. I think chat support is a brilliant invention of the past, you know, ten years. Uh, most because most people are going to be much more willing to um, to interact with the chat widget than they are to call you or email you yet. So, um, yeah, I like something like that. 
Wes, uh, this has been really a fascinating dialogue, and I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to learn from this and be able to put this to work for their business. And there's going to be some people are going to be like, hey, I want to reach out to Wes. So um, what's your preferred social platform? And also, where do you want to send them if they want to learn more about your profitable website, Launchpad? Yeah, so my biggest social by far is my YouTube. So it's just go to um, Wes McDowell, sorry, YouTube, and then search Wes McDowell. That's the name of my channel. Um, and then if people want to learn more about the program, there's actually first a, like a free kind of masterclass version of it. Um, if people want to get that, and by the way, that's going to walk you through like everything you need for your entire website, a small pared down, really streamlined kind of website that works for any service business. Um, and this particular thing is for service businesses, by the way. So, um, to get that, you'll just go to westmcdowell.com slash um, SME for social media examiner. Awesome. Wes, thank you so much for coming on and answering my myriad of questions and, and really sharing your expertise with us. We're super better because of it. Yeah. Happy to Mike. I, this is an honor to be here. So thanks for having me.